Welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And our regular feature, this is uh, Got, not Got, The Lost World of Manchester City, of course, inspired by Derek Hammond and Gary Silkey. Obviously inspired me to do my other little version, which is a uh, not got, now got the found world, of course, where I look at, I actually purchase items and share the opening and share the things with you that I purchased. Probably some great memories in here. So we've been going through it, having a look at certain things. I've thrown in my little personal memories as well as what Derek and, and Gary have, have actually added to this uh, over time. So it's uh, just a little look at four or five items in the book that they talk about. And uh, we'll see if have I got any specific memories. Sometimes I have no idea. Sometimes I've totally forgot or sometimes I just don't remember. But we'll have a look at uh, four or five things today. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. You know, these city vlogs, city past, present and forever, we call it. Don't see or I call it anyway uh, when these are coming out. Please, you can give us a thumbs up. That would be absolutely brilliant. Tell your friends, tell your city fan friends if you can, and uh, get get the, get the numbers up. That'd be great. Make a, an old man very happy. Yes, I am an old man. So obviously, these guys are talking about things I was around for. Sometimes I, I sort of remember more than others. First thing we're going to touch upon, which has been done before, I mean, petroleum companies. We're going to do football club badges, of course. Uh, a lot of petrol companies keen on making as much money as they could out of the customers but occasionally there was one like Shell who would actually make young boys very happy by doing this and obviously it was in the old days of you know buy such and such a thing and you get these uh, free gifts or pay a little extra money and get and get the stuff and even a few girls I think I did say young boys and so a few girls but there certainly wasn't the quantity of girls that I mean certainly at my school there was a, a, a struggle to find any girls who were interested in football in all fairness but uh, they would be happy these petroleum companies uh, particularly shell and that's the one that usually crops up in these things producing plenty of football stuff for us to collect and we've covered other delights in previous vlogs of course i've admitted that i didn't really get much chance for these things because i didn't know anyone with a car my my parents didn't have a car my dad my dad died when i was young about 10 years old but he didn't have a car my mother never had a car and i just i just never sort of mixed with people who had cars obviously till, till i got of a working age if you like and bought my own car and all this so i sort of missed out on the late 60s and 70s all these little little this seemed to pass me by and i don't remember in the schoolyard i don't think too many of my peer group if you like uh, all you know also had it because i don't remember seeing these things and thinking oh i'm so jealous so it wasn't too bad if you don't see it you don't want it do you so yeah, that was the thing. So I don't, re I really missed out on these things. Of course, we had the World Cup coins, which we've talked about. We had the squelches, which I've got a set of that I, I purchased after seeing them in this book, of course. Uh, FA Cup winners coins and uh, a top team collection of photo discs to build a squad of Britain's best players. I mean, all these things I would, I would have loved. I would have loved and I would have uh, used and probably made. Uh, knowing, knowing what I used to do as a kid, I used to used to create, get my own little games with dice and these coins, and I would have probably come up with some sort of top trumps with coins, stuff like that, because that's just how my imagination works at the time. But uh, the, the guys themselves, uh, Derek and Gary the best of all were the EXO collection of football club badges, of course, all the badges from the from the teams, and they even supplied apparently a fold out presentation card to stick them on. A twenty p twenty p starter pack for twenty six badges. Twenty six badges. That wasn't too bad, was it? Even it probably won't be that day now uh, on inflation. In all fairness, and you couldn't collect it anyway. You just just you just I'd just get it through Shell, get it through the petrol stations. And the little foil badges, they say, were irresistible. Everyone was collecting them. And I say, I don't, I honestly don't remember. They may have been, and I miss it. They sort of passed me by. Let me know what you, if you remember them, guys. Anyway, this is what this is all about. You know, sort of trying to uh, come up with things and see what you, your memories are of them. Please share any memories you've got of anything we talk about on these programs. Of course, that's what it, that's what it's all about. But. Uh, as I say, as far as me and my peer, perhaps I'm, I've missed out. Perhaps he felt sorry for me and my friends at school and they, they did it behind my back. I'm not I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but it's not something I was overly familiar with. And on to the next thing, yeah, another interesting one. 
Wembley Matoy Franny entitled this section. Yeah, um, the guys never knew about these things, so it wasn't just me that missed out on stuff. But obviously, this is a, a memorabilia thing. There's stuff out there that uh, we couldn't, we sometimes didn't know about. And I, again, I missed out on these. I don't remember anything about it at all. Uh, I love my football. I was going to Main Road, obviously, from a, a very early age. But it was uh, obviously a sad time as well. I did I did lose my dad uh, very early on. As I said, I was only t- about 10 years old when my, when my dad passed away. And money was always tight. So I, I wouldn't have seen these items. And again, I, would have, I probably wouldn't have been able to afford to buy them anyway. Uh, although finances improved, it may, may have been a lack of cash that meant I was never to own certain things and certain memory like these things. So I, don't, I don't think that was a problem with the petrol thing. I just didn't know anyone who, who would do it. But these little metal figurines, uh, obviously images coming up on the screen as we're talking about it. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to have one of these tucked away, so have a look. You might, you might, again, you might remember these. I don't. I mean, Billy Bremen. I mean, all players that I knew very, very well as a kid. And didn't admire, but it's, it's like when we used to play on the park. We used to be players. If we were playing goal, would be a certain player. Would be Tommy Lawrence. I, I loved to be Tommy Lawrence at Liverpool. I didn't have to be a City player. So there's a lot of respect for other teams. Well, apart from that one across the road, where we never liked United or City fans as, as kids. Uh, that's perhaps we all, when the teams were on the telly in Europe, etc. United was the only one we would never ever support in a million years. So you had players like Billy Bremner, Martin Chivers, Charlie George. I mean, you can forget that FA Cup final on his back, uh, of course, and what we've got here. Celebrated for cities is Francis Lee. What a brilliant! I mean, that is absolutely superb. I mean, I would have loved to own Francis Lee and any of the other guys as well. So, as I said, possibly looking at them, it might have been a little bit more expensive at the time. But if you've got any of those squirreled away, let me know. But again, it's something that passed me by. And the guys talk about summer soccer schools. Yeah, well, these are very still still popular now, aren't they? Of course. But uh, these these things apparently started in the 70s. I was uh, far too old probably by the time they became popular. And uh, yeah, even even my kids, even the kid, my lad uh, and the girls didn't show any real interest in playing football as such. But even my lad uh, never never sort of mived for it. It wasn't something I'd done myself. So I didn't, didn't sort of look for these things. He, he played for school teams and he played for other junior teams and stuff. But uh, the, these soccer schools, if we'd, we'd have had, me and my mates had had uh, the money in the 60s and 70s. I think it's the sort of thing we would have loved. I mean, the closest I came uh, to a soccer school thing was actually, whilst it was, was junior school, the last term was always, you had two terms of football and uh, just football. Yeah, we didn't play rugby at junior school, just football. And then you had a term of cricket. Uh, and of course, we... We actually, I spent a term at cricket school. So that's the closest really I came to it. I was in Withington in Manchester, very famous. I don't think it's there now. Um, I'm really surprised if it is. Uh, in, in Withington, there was a little cricket school around the back. Uh, well, little, it was quite big. Um, but obviously, we were under tutelage at the time of that Langston England fast bowler, Peter Lever. So that would have been the summer of 1969. And this was obviously totally free. A bus used to turn up at Old Moat Junior School where I used to go. And we used to go to cricket school. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I, I don't, I think it was during uh, school time as well. So obviously it was, you know, we missed, missed a lesson. We might have missed a lesson of maths or something. I'm not too sure what we missed. But yeah, that, that's the closest I ever come to a, a soccer school was going to a cricket school at the age of nine or t- well, 10, about 10 years old at that time. And I think I think it was totally free. I don't think uh, my parents uh, had to pay anything for it. It was just part of, of the school thing, you know, to obviously certain people. Not all, not all the lads went, only the lads who were on the cricket team and were, and were good enough to, to play cricket went to cricket school. And, yeah, we perhaps did a little bit. But the wrong thing I learned about Peter Lever was he could draw a good circle. You know, he had to draw a, had to draw a circle on the floor sometimes. You were bowling, that's what he had to aim for, that circle. So he could... And I, it always amazed me how perfect his circles were that he drew with a chalk, with a piece of chalk. But, I mean, that's just a silly memory, but that, that's one of my memories of it. And uh, it's the lads, uh, Derek and Gary, talk about a guy called Steve Mitchell, who's a United fan, and his, his mate went to Pofelli. I never went to Butlins as a, as a kid, but this was 1977, so obviously, again, Butlins was a place I sort of stayed clear of. I, I preferred Pontins and Have the Haven camps uh, eventually as I, as I was growing up and my kids were growing up. 
but in 1977, obviously, uh, Pontins was probably more more a place I'd go than Butlins. But yeah, they were at Perfelli and Butlins, and it was, it, they were pretty pretty gutty because uh, City Gary Owen and Peter Barnes, who who all do I've done a lot together over the years. I remember playing the charity match where they were both managers of both teams. Uh, Gary Owen and Peter Barnes, so they sort of joined at the hip a lot of the time. So they would be guest footballers to these two United fans, Football Week, of course. Uh, and uh, as, as you'd expect, the City players were nice to these little United uh, fans and happy to get their autographs, etc. I mean, no, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind if it had been me and my mates uh, or my City supporting mates, which uh, I don't even remember having any. I, I think we had a, I think we had a Chelsea supporting friend. Why I'm not too sure, uh, but obviously I don't didn't really have any close mates who are United fans. But there's absolutely no doubt in my mind if I went to one of these soccer schools and a, a United player, I mean any other player, fine Liverpool, Leeds, it didn't matter what other player turned up, whatever United player turned up, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have asked for an autograph. I would have been absolutely devastated because I think I mentioned as I mentioned earlier, we couldn't stand them, we hated, and that was and that's how it should be. Uh, they were our enemy, even from a very tender age. So. Yeah, uh, at least at least uh, Steve Mitchell and his mate were a bit more, a bit more kind. Uh, but uh, certainly, that was 1977. Yeah, would have, would have been any less tribal then? Probably not. No, definitely not. Uh, football action transfers. Yeah, they talk about football. Now I do remember these. At last, I do I do remember or got involved with something, and it was great fun. You had like a, a, a letter set thing, like grease proof paper, and you had the stencil of the players, and you can make your own action action sequence. Uh, with these stencil players, and you scribbled away. And as I say, if you if you missed, if you scribbled too much and went over onto another thing, you obviously got little things that you didn't want. You, I think the guys mentioned in the book, you might have got the odd head decapitated that you accidentally done from another stick and stuff like that. And that that's totally feasible. As kids, you weren't always. The, I wasn't always the gentlest at doing it, or the the neatest at doing it. And I don't remember, yeah, they've got an image there of Colin Bell, haven't they? I don't remember those players' heads. So, I mean, that would have been all, all over my sort of books and school books or whatever if I, if I could have done Colin Bell's head and put him on somewhere. I don't remember that, but I do remember the action sequences. It would have been great, as I said, putting him in little books and stuff. And from memory, I think this inspired me, actually, to have a phase. I went through a phase where I was drawing, drawing action sequences. So, obviously, you got these that you could stencil, stencil or, or get off, like a transfer. But, obviously, it, it gave me a, an actual... Uh, the the urge to draw uh, action. So, I was drawing football as in a goal and a goal bursting into the net and players. And I wasn't very good. I was a rubbish artist, to be honest with you. But it did, it did inspire me a little bit to try and do my own little action sequences. I mean, I don't know if you, you thought of that. Perhaps you've still got some of these stands. Imagine if you had some of these from the 1970s. I mean, there must be some somewhere hidden in a squirreled away in an attic. But uh, there you go. And I did actually try and reenact goals as well. If you see these magazines where they reenact a goal, I, I try to actually... St- uh, do do a a drawing of a goal perhaps that City had scored uh, to to some uh, uh, I think I even cheated and put my sheet over the over a newspaper and an image a few times but hey so hey that's that's uh, well I was only a kid I was only about twenty two so uh, you have to forgive me <laughs> yeah and to finish off yeah the main entrance the main entrance at Main Road. Uh, of course, we get those as old as me, and you've seen pictures, even if you don't remember it. Actually, very warehouse looking main entrance. There's a lot of clubs were well. some, some are a little bit grander, looks a bit, a bit grander. City was always very warehouse looking from a distance before the new face and everything. And I always remember the player's entrance next to the main entrance, just a tatty old door from, from memory. It wasn't much. I think it was quite slim as well. It was like a, similar to the, one of the turnstile entrances that were always always not exactly not exactly wide, were they? The turnstile entrance in the old main road, the old fascia that down to the plat lane there on, on that side of the ground. And I do remember getting autographs uh, between that pokey player's entrance and the car park, which was on the corner of the Platt Lane, of course. So when the players used to park in the Platt Lane, that corner, big car park in the corner, you've probably seen that on images. There's a very famous image of 
when there's uh, that, the big crowd at Main Road, and obviously you can see all the cars parked in in that car park. Well, that's where the players used to used to park. I do remember running and getting autographs uh, of the players in a proper autograph book, not not on a sheet of paper or not on a program to get them to sign. It was a proper autograph book. Sadly, it got lost in time, obviously, as you'd expect. Anyway, I, I digress. The whole thing of this main entrance was a a guy called Graham Aldred was involved in the reworking of the fascia of Main Road in the late 70s, early 80s. And he sent before and after pictures. I mean, I do, I did like the way they did it. I, th- I thought it did look a lot better, especially when you had the, the actual uh, roof with the new roof on with the, with the that ended up as a, a pig pens, didn't they? I think somewhere in Cheshire, I remember seeing images of those, those, uh, that roof, you know, that's the, the, the half circle roof thing, and I think with the new face, and there's some images there of before and after. Uh, I think it looked quite good. I think it looked quite good. I mean, I, I love Main Road. It was it was scruffy, but I mean that that made it look a little bit nicer. The new main entrance had new fence like gates as well, didn't it? With bars, it looks looks a bit like uh, the front of Strange Ways, but even that looks okay to me. But uh, I'm biased. I'm from a city fan, so it all looked good to me. I mean, it was a dis- bit of a mishmash Main Road. But I used to love just watching, you know, looking at views, bird's eye views of it from above. And even though it was a, a concoction of roofs and styles, uh, it, it was home. It, it was our football ground. I was very, very proud of it. Uh, but obviously that was interesting to see that before and after where they did the tender for doing it. Uh, and from memory, looking at those images, that was it. Yeah, it, it, they did a, a reasonable job to, to the, what they tended to do. And I, I thought it looked quite impressive by the end of it. It looked far, even though it wasn't very modern inside, as we all know, the old main stand, uh, certainly elements of it were still very old fashioned. Even if you watch films like Jimmy Grimble, you see a lot of the inside of the main stand looks very, very old. And I like that. But obviously, it's, it's, it's not modern, is it? But I like that old style anyway. So well, there you go. Uh, that that's that for today, guys. Uh, hope you hope you enjoyed that. This uh, this latest version of got not got the lost world of Manchester City. Hope it brings back some memories. Hope it might yeah, urge you to go and try and find some of these things perhaps we've mentioned. And if you've got anything that we've not talked about over the well, I've been doing this for almost a couple of years now. Over a couple of years, little variations. We're getting to the end of the book now. So, and I will continue my sister one, of course, my sister vlog to this. Got not got the foul world of Manchester City where I do share my little findings with you as well. But uh, my thanks, of course, to Derek Hammond and Gary Silky for inspiring me to put this little series of uh, vlogs together. Anyway, let me let me know. Let me know what your what your memories are of what we talked about today. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other meet here again on the citizen channel i only ask one thing don't i what is it do you know yeah stay safe blues come on city thanks for watching bye for now